Hello everyone. Uh, today I will be making an attempt in this video to explain the utility of interpoles in a DC machine. Actually, to be precise, interpoles are also known as uh, commutating poles or com poles, and uh, the function of interpole is to uh, help or uh, aid aid in the commutation in DC machine commutation in DC machine actually what happens uh, due to our nature reaction we see that there is a delay in commutation by delay in commutation means that the time taken for the reversal of armature coil current the coil which is undergoing commutation that time is uh, increased or rather the change of the current through the commutated coil becomes slow so what happens by the time the change is going to take place completely the contact between the commutator segment and brush is broken i mean to say that commutator segment to which the ends of the commutating coil was connected that commutator segment and the brush contact gets broken and due to that there is an incomplete commutation and because of that there is a sparking at the trailing edge of the brush so this uh, creates some pits on the commutator surface pits means uh, uh, some holes on the commutator surface are being created due to the sparking and these pits formed on the commutator surface they attract dirt and uh, they attract dirt moisture so what happens if there is a accumulation of uh, dirt and moisture on the commutator surface to be precise the pits the small holes the pits which are formed on the commutator surface this creates a thin film thin film of uh, some insulating layer and because of that the current density between that point where a thin film is created due to this dirt and moisture is uh, very small or it's almost zero so what happens the current density at the other part of the commutator surface gets increased and this uh, is very detrimental for uh, uh, operation of a DC machine so uh, what I want to say is that due to this uh, effect of armature reaction there is a problem seen in the commutation now uh, I will again come back to this computation portion in detail before that uh, if you look at the diagram uh, I have already drawn but uh, certain things I have not shown so what I would like to say is that uh, uh, earlier also I have uh, prepared three or four videos so I would like to keep the same diagram so that uh, you can correlate if need arises you can correlate so if you remember uh, in our earlier diagram uh, this was uh, taken as the north pole and this was taken as the south pole and in the, my earlier diagram I have taken this to be the direction of rotation and of course I have taken generating action now uh, one should not say that I am biased that I, I, I always uh, take generating action uh, whatever conclusion or reference I am drawing out for generating action based on that you can also draw out conclusion for motoring action so any of the motoring or generating action can be taken for an explanation but uh, personally I prefer that I take generating action but the same thing can be also explained using motoring action uh, what I want to say is that if if I am not changing the polarity of the field poles let's say here I have shown this to be my north pole and this to be my south pole so if I am not changing the polarity of the field poles that means if it is north pole and it is south pole in that case for motoring action only one thing is going to change and that is the direction of rotation so what I want to say is that if the rotation is in clockwise direction for generating action then for motoring action the rotation should be in anti-clockwise direction provided the north and south pole are not changed so this point needs to be kept in mind that 
what i want what i am saying that the polarity of this main field pole north and south are not changed these are intact so keeping the polarity of main field pole north and south pole intact if i want to have a motoring action in that case the direction of rotation for motoring action will be opposite to the generating action now a, if i want this to be my north pole and this to be my south pole then by that right hand grip rule you can figure out that this lower conductor should be shown cross current and the top conductor of the field winding should be shown dot current that means cross means current is entering through here dot means it is leaving so you see thumb is in this direction that means the magnetic lines of flux are in this direction so you see that lines of flux are leaving this pole face that means this is a north pole likewise for the south pole lines of flux should enter this pole face so my thumb should be pointing towards this pole face so for that to happen this right hand four fingers should enter from the bottom portion that means this uh, this field coil should have cross and from top it should come out so this should have dot so by the right hand grip rule i am putting the cross and dot for the main field pole which you are already aware of so let me put it so this will be this will be cross this will be dot this will be dot these are all dots and here you have the same thing this will be cross this will be cross and this will be dot now we are taking generating action so we are assuming that there is a prime mover and prime mover is giving mechanical energy input to this dc generator so prime mover is mechanically coupled what i mean to say is the shaft of the prime mover and the shaft of this dc generator they are mechanically coupled let's say the prime mover is a diesel engine so diesel engine shaft is connected with the shaft of the dc generator and let us assume that prime mover is rotating the armature of the dc generator in clockwise direction so this is the direction of rotation of the armature core so if this is the direction of rotation and if you are asked to find the induction of polarity in this conductor let us do apply uh, right hand you can apply fleming's right hand rule or you may also take the cross product of v and b let's say that this is north and south so lines of flux is, is directed in this direction isn't it so lines of flux are in this direction let me draw for one Uh, one point we should always keep in mind while plotting the magnetic lines of flux is that magnetic lines of flux do not intersect each other this you have learned in your school days so i am just making a recapitulation of that that magnetic lines of flux do not intersect with each other now this is my direction of lines of flux you see outside the magnet from north to south and inside the magnet it is from south to north okay inside the magnet south to north outside is it is north to south now so my velocity vector will be in which direction if it is rotating in clockwise direction so if it is rotating in clockwise direction the tangential velocity will be in this direction for this conductors 3 4 5 the tangential velocity will be upwards so my velocity vector is upwards so let's say this is my v and my v vector will be like this one so this is v so now we have to take v cross b so what you do you have to uh, align this portion of the right hand you have to align you have to align this portion of the right hand with the first vector we are saying v cross b so v cross b means what we are writing first v cross b so we are writing this first v so our so this thing should be along v vector velocity vector 
and when I am going to curl this uh, four fingers, it should point towards B. So I will keep this. I will keep this along V velocity vector, and then when I curl these four fingers, it should move towards B. So while doing so, thumb will give me the induced semi polarity. So B is this one. So this will be aligned with V, and I am pointing these four fingers towards B. So where is thumb pointing into the board? So that means it will be cross. The same conclusion we can use. The same conclusion can be. attained by using this uh, fleming's right hand rule this is along the magnetic lines of flux this is along the velocity vector and this middle finger will give you the induced semi polarity so now let's put the induced semi polarity in these conductors so these will be cross these will be cross this will be cross and these will be dot now you see over here this coil cc dash whatever is shown coil cc dash this coil cc dash should not be thought of that it is being taken in extra what i want to say is that if you look at the armature uh, you can look at the armature what do you see there are six number of coils what are the armature coils armature coil 1 1 dash Armature coil two two dash, armature coil three three dash, armature coil four four dash. Likewise, you have got six armature coils. So now, whatever position is indicated by coil C C dash, this position, which is uh, uh, which is uh, the coil, the position of the coil C C dash, this position will be occupied by. each of the six coils this thing should be must be clearly understood that this coil cc dash whatever is being shown over here it is actually indicating a position it is actually indicating a position and the position of this coil cc dash is going to be occupied by each of these six number of coils which are placed in the armature what are the six coils 1 1 dash 2 2 dash 3 3 dash likewise up to 6 6 dash so this position which is being uh, uh, the coil position cc dash is going to be attained by each of these six coils but equally the but equally true is that equally true is that no coil is always going to retain this position cc dash because of the obvious reason that armature is rotating so if the armature is rotating it is very natural that this position of coil cc dash will be occupied by first say 1 1 dash when this moves to this side please look at the board when coil 1 1 dash moves so coil side 1 will come to this position and coil side 1 dash will come over to this position please uh, be attentive this thing is rotating in clockwise direction so the coil side 1 will come to this position which is occupied by c and coil side 1 dash will come to position this one which is occupied by c dash so now you can see that after some rotation after few degrees of rotation coil side 1 will occupy the position of coil c and coil side 1 dash will occupy the position of c dash so that means you can say that at that point of time coil 1 1 dash is undergoing commutation so what is the meaning of commutation uh, let me take a very simple example let's say it is a lap connected winding it is a lap connected winding so if it is a lap connected winding in that case you can expect that the two ends of a coil is going to be connected with two consecutive commutator segment like like for example let's say this is a coil so this coil has got two ends so these two ends is connected to these two commutator segments there are other coils also i am not indicating that please please bear with that there are other coils also 
so each of the coil has got two ends each of the coil has got two ends this for for this coil this is one end and this is another end so what do you see that this particular coil is having its two coil ends that means uh, this one and this one being connected to two commutator segment now these two commutator segments are consecutive or or they can say they are side by side or they are adjacent so in lap winding what is done let's if i say if i want to number the commutator segment this is commutator segment 1 this is commutator segment 2 this is commutator segment 3 4 5 6 like that okay so what do you see here that this coil uh, you can let's say you let's name name it if we let's say this is coil side c and this is coil side c dash so this coil c c dash is having how many ends this is one end and this is another end so what do you see that these two ends of the coil side cc dash is being connected with two commutator segment now these two commutator segments are consecutive or adjacent commutator segment that means these two commutator segments are side by side so this happens in case of lap winding let us take that uh, example uh, that case of particular case let let's say these are lap connected winding so if these are lap connected winding in this uh, if, if if these uh, armature coils a uh, lap connected winding in that case the two ends of the coil is going to be connected to two consecutive commutator segments in this diagram i have shown that coil side cc dash is being connected to two consecutive commutator segment 4 and 5 now please remember that these red lines which are being shown by here these red lines are nothing but these are mica insulation so these red lines are nothing but these are mica insulation the range of usually is it is it is around 0.8 mm thick so why this is given this mica insulation because if that is not given if you do not give a insulation between two consecutive commutator segment in that case the two ends of the coil will get short circuited so in order to avoid that if we want that there should not be a short circuit happening between the two ends of a coil in that case we have to provide a insulation which is usually made of mica between any two commutator segment so here you see between commutator segment 5 and 4 there is a mica insulation likewise there is a mica insulation between commutator segment 3 and 4 likewise it's there okay now what happens this commutator and coil i have drawn the develop view develop view means i have imagine that commutator segments are being cut and they are laid flat so this is a developed view but actually it's a round up thing so what happens the commutator segment is placed on the shaft and shaft is rotating so obviously the commutator segment is also rotating but the brushes are fixed brushes are not moving brushes are not moving over here i have shown uh, brushes uh, let's say this is your brush uh, b and this is your b dash so these are the brushes i have shown b and b dash so brushes are not moving they are stationary however the commutator is moving or rather the commutator segments are moving so what happens a time will come when brush is going to come in contact with these two segments so this is my brush so when the brush comes in contact with these two segments segment number 4 and 5 what is going to happen these two ends of the coil will get short circuited you can you can uh, see there is a short circuit path uh, being available what is the path if i move along this path if i move along this path i am moving from here then i am moving through the brush then through the brush and over here you see there is a closed path existing so there is a short circuit path existing isn't it you can see there is a short circuit path existing through this brush so what happens when the brush is coming in contact with these two segments 4 and 5 the two ends of the coil cc dash they get short circuited and what we say that this coil is undergoing commutation what we say this coil is undergoing commutation so what is the meaning of commutation commutation means actually commutation uh, let us be clear that commutation does not happen with armature winding it happens with the armature coil now what is the difference between armature coil and armature winding the sum total 
the sum total of all the armature coils are referred as armature winding if say you take this example so in this particular example there have been uh, six number of armature coils shown named as 11 dash 22 dash 33 dash likewise so this armature is comprising of six number of armature coils but when we refer armature winding we refer it to the sum total that is all of the coils okay it's like a, the you can compare it with a student and the classroom electrical second year student comprises of several students so electrical second year students are analogous to armature winding whereas a particular student of electrical second year is like a armature coil so this computation is happening with the armature coil and the coil which is uh, undergoing commutation is referred as commutated coil so it's not like that only coil 11 dash will undergo commutation when this thing is rotating 11 dash is going to occupy this position indicated by cc dash after some time coil 22 dash will occupy this position so at that moment coil 22 dash will become commutated coil after some time coil 33 dash will occupy this position so in that case coil 33 dash will become commutated coil so whatever is happening to coil 11 dash the same thing is going to happen for the rest of the five coils okay now what is actually happening when a coil is when a armature coil is undergoing commutation what is actually happening what is happening is that the direction of current carried by the armature coil is going to get reversed or rather you can say there is a reversal of there is a reversal of armature coil current how we can be observed it's very easy please be observeful on the board please what i want to say is that at this moment you can see coil side one is here and coil side one dash is here now what is the induction of polarity of coil side one cross and what is the induction of polarity of coil side one dash it is dot after some time when this thing moves or rotates or turns what is going to happen coil one will occupy this position which is occupied by c and coil side one dash will occupy this position which is occupied by c dash but after some time again what will happen one dash will come over to this side and one will come over this side that means when this thing rotates and comes to this position in that case coil side one will occupy the position occupied by coil side six dash previously and likewise whatever position was occupied by coil side six previously that position will be occupied by one dash isn't it very easy you just focus when this thing is rotating what is happening a time will come when coil side one will come over to this position which is occupied by six dash and at the same time coil side one dash and at the same time coil side one dash is going to come to a position which was earlier occupied by coil side six so when coil side one dash come to this side it will become cross but earlier it was dot likewise when coil side one moves to this side it will become dot but earlier it was cross so you see here only there is a indication that there is a reversal of armature current here coil side one was cross when this thing moves to that side it will become dot so there is a change from cross to dot likewise coil side one dash here it was dot when this thing moves to this side it will become cross so there is a reversal of armature current through this armature coil 11 dash this reversal of armature current through coil 11 dash is known as commutation now what is the current carried by each armature coil say if ia is the armature current which is entering or leaving the brush so what is going to happen when armature current ia enters the brush this armature current ia is getting to distributed is going to be distributed among the different parallel path which is existing in the armature circuit so if say there is a number of parallel path existing in the armature circuit and ia is the armature current entering the brush so what is the current through each parallel path obviously it will be ia divided by a because ia was the current which was entering the brush or leaving the brush and when current is entering the brush it is going to see that there are a number of parallel path existing 
and we assume that the resistance of each of the parallel path is same. So current IA which is entering the brush is going to see there are A number of parallel path existing. So it will get equally divided among those A number of parallel path. So that means current carried by each parallel path will become IA by A. So that means what current carried by each of these coil 1 1 dash 2 2 dash 3 3 dash is going to have a value given by IA by A where IA is the armature current entering or leaving the brush and small a is the number of parallel path in the armature circuit. Obviously for left winding a equals to p that is number of poles and for wave winding a equals to 2. Okay. Now what I want to say is that how much time is available for the commutated coil to get its coil current reversed or rather we can say how much time is provided how much time is provided to the commutated coil or the coil undergoing commutation for the reversal of its armature current the time which is needed by the commutated coil to traverse the width w i d t h width of the brush so if say this is the width of the brush so commutation time tc Commutation time Tc will be given by your formula. What was uh, what is the formula for velocity, time, and distance? Distance traversed equals to velocity into time. So that means time is what distance divided by velocity. So over here, if say WB is the thickness of the brush, if WB is the thickness of the brush, and VD is the peripheral velocity of the commutator vd is the peripheral velocity of the commutator then we can say that time which is available for the commutated coil for reversing its armature current will be given by tc equals to w by vb where tc equals to w by vd what is vd the peripheral velocity of the coil let's uh, let's not write vd uh, let's write vc so that it's uh, in tune with that commutator. So Vc is what the peripheral velocity. Peripheral velocity means what? Peripheral velocity is given by pi d n. So what is pi? Pi is your ratio radian. Pi is radian. The ratio of this uh, arc of a circle by radius like that. Uh, and what is d? D is the diameter and n is the speed in RPS. So what is n? n is the speed of the armature in RPS. D is the diameter. Pi Vc. So we say Tc that is commutation time. Tc equals to how much? Wb that is the width of the brush by commutator peripheral speed. W by Vc. Uh, it's okay na? Distance by speed. So this is if say if this is meter and this is meter per second. So meter meter get cancelled, second goes over. Okay, it's correct. Now over here I have tried to depict that with a graph. This axis is the current carried through one armature coil. So this axis, this vertical axis, this vertical axis is, is indicating the current carried by the armature coil, one, one armature coil and this horizontal axis is the time axis. So what happens just before the coil is coming in contact with the brush, let's say current carried by the coil is IA by A. So when it traverses the width of the brush, the coil current changes to minus IA by A. So what is the change in current? 2 IA by A. Because it was earlier IA by A. And here it is become minus IA by A. So delta I that is change in coil current is given by 2 times of IA by A. This is the time. Sorry. This is the change in current. Change in current or the commutated coil. How much is the change in current? How much is the change in current in the commutated coil? That is given by 2 into IA by A. Okay. Now, uh, let me, uh, if you are having, let me repeat once more. Is that just before the coil is coming in contact with the brush, the coil current was IA by A in one direction. Now, when it is coming in contact with the brush, the coil ends get short circuited. The coil end gets short circuited by the brush. And this is the path of the short circuit. 
so what happens current starts changing its direction and it is changed to minus i a by a so this time is known as commutation time tc this commutation time tc is given by time needed to travel the width of the brush this is given by width of the brush by commutator uh, the this is given by width of the brush divided by commutator peripheral speed what is the peripheral speed of the commutator tangential speed or peripheral speed that v v equals to r omega you have studied in your uh, mechanics engineering mechanics v equals to r omega so that v that is the tangential velocity i am talking about this thing now what i want to say is that if you observe here there is a change in coil current happening you can also observe from here when coil side 1 moves from this point to this side that means from position of this to position occupied by 6 dash it will become from cross to dot and at the same time coil side 1 dash will move from this position to position occupied by coil side 6 and it will become from dot to cross so there is a reversal of coil current for this coil 1 1 dash the moment it is moving from this side to this side that means occupied by position 1 1 dash to occupied by position 6 dash 6 so while doing so it is traversing the width of the brush so what is happening there is a change in armature current happening and the time needed is the time which is taken to travel this width of the brush actually this is a schematic representation the thing is that brush is stationary and the commutator segments are moving okay say commutator segments are moving in this direction this is the direction of motion this is the direction of motion so commutator segment is moving in this direction brush is stationary mind you brush is stationary commutator segment is moving so at some point what will happen this contact will move from this point to this point so at that time some other coil will get short circuited and what will go happen here some other coil will occupy this position cc dash let's say coil 2 to dash okay so this thing goes on happening for each of the coils now what i want to say is that what is the reason behind delay in commutation what is the meaning of delay in commutation what are the reason behind this now to start with let me tell you that we might be thinking or right or rather we might be afraid that what is going to happen with the commutated coil because you see in the commutated coil the two ends of the coil are getting short circuited by this brush it is in contact with the brush now please look here the ends of the coil are not in direct contact with the brush rather the coil ends are connected with the commutator segment coil ends are connected with the commutator segments and brush is in contact with the commutator segment so those commutator segments in which the brush is in contact those commutator segments in which the brush is in having contact so that is going to decide which coil will get short circuited that means which commutator segment are in contact with the brush will decide which coil gets short circuited now short circuited means what very small or almost zero resistance or impedance so in that case you are thinking that there will be very high current circulating in the commutated coil because it's being short circuited so so only resistance to limit this coil current is the resistance of this coil but this coil is actually being built we have built up this coil by keeping in mind that resistance should be very small so as to make sure that i square r loss is small just to minimize that i square r loss or to maximize efficiency we always try our best to keep the coil resistance to a very minimum as small as it's possible so in that situation it might be thinking that the huge current will be flowing isn't it so now what happens this huge current will be flowing but if you look carefully what is the position of the commutated coil position of the commutated coil is indicated by cc dash position of the commutated coil is indicated by cc dash so now if you look at the peripheral speed of coil side cc dash and if you look about the b vector what do you find let me know please what will be the peripheral velocity of coil side c this side so this is V. What is the direction of B? This is the direction of magnetic flux density B. So they are parallel. What about coil side C dash? So this was the 
direction for coil side C. What about coil, coil side C dash? This is rotating in clockwise direction. So for coil side C dash, peripheral speed will be in this direction. Okay. So for this peripheral speed is here. And for this peripheral speed is here. Okay. So for C dash peripheral speed is here. But what about the direction of B? B means our magnetic lines of flux density. <coughs> magnetic lines of flux density vector. This is a B vector, you can say. So what is the direction of B? Direction of B is in this direction. So if you find out what is the angle between V and B here? 0 degree. What is the angle between V and B here? 180 degree, right? So now instead of thinking this as a coil, instead of thinking this as a coil, I can view this as a summation of two conductors. This is my one conductor, this is my another conductor. So these two conductors taken together, these two conductors on this side and on this side taken together comprises the coil CC dash. So instead of uh, using that coil approach, if I if I view that this coil is of this coil is comprising of two conductors, one conductor over here, one conductor over here. So we use the formula BLV sin theta, EMF induced in a conductor moving in a magnetic field B with velocity V is given by what BLV sin theta. What is B? Magnetic flux density. What is V? The speed or the velocity. What is L? Length of the conductor. And what is theta? Angle between B and V. So over here for this conductor, what is the angle between V and B? They are parallel, so zero. Over here, what is the angle between V and B? They are anti-parallel. So what is the angle? 180 degree. So if you, you uh, put theta equal to 0 and 180 in the formula, B L V sin theta, it comes as 0. What is the EMF induced in a single conductor? It is given by B L V sin theta. But theta is the angle between V and B. So B L V sin theta with this formula, we can see that EMF induced in the completed coil is 0. Right? Because EMF induced in the completed coil is 0 because of this BLV sin theta. But hold it. Think again. You might uh, find someone that uh, they will tell you that this guy is telling you something wrong. Why? What is the reason? Somebody may point out that I am not showing, I am not saying the correct thing. I am saying the wrong thing. Please hold it and think over. When I am saying that velocity vector is like this and this, these are correct. But when I am saying magnetic flux density vector is like this, maybe I need to think again. What I want to say is that when I am drawing the lines of flux for field winding, in that case the direction of magnetic lines of flux is in this direction. That means I am not taking into account the armature flux. I have only drawn the magnetic lines of flux due to field winding current, not due to armature winding current. That means this conclusion what I have said over here that B will be like this. Magnetic lines of flux vector will be like this. This is going to be valid only if armature current is zero. That means only if field current is present. But if armature is loaded, then armature current will definitely flow. And due to armature current, there will be armature flux phi A also. So in that case, this won't be the, uh, what should I say, the spatial orientation. This won't be the spatial orientation of the field flux. Rather, this orientation of the field flux is going to get changed due to the superimposed effect of armature flux. So for that, I uh, am not going to again uh, go in detail, but uh, rather I would uh, tell you that if you are having some difficulty, then you again refer to my earlier lecture where I have explained this armature reaction. So while explaining this armature reaction, I have talked about this thing that in case of generating action, the magnetic neutral axis gets shift. Where it gets shift for generating action? For generating action, the magnetic neutral axis shifts in the direction of rotation. So over here, uh, you, can, uh, you can use that thing that uh, what will be the what will be the, uh, what should I say, the armature magnetic axis? How to find the armature magnetic axis? You see, 
you need to think over it's very uh, short what should i say you have to apply your common sense let me just uh, let's make a quick thing let's say this is your cross and this is our dot what is this conductor one one dash so what is the magnetic axis for this conductor right hand grip you apply rule dot means leaving cross means entering so this is the magnetic axis what about this conductor for uh, let's say five five dash so or you can let's say six six dash let's say this is our conductor six and this is our six dash what was it it was your dot and this was your cross so what is the magnetic axis for this cross means entering dot means leaving cross dot so it's like this now what i want to say is that i have only drawn the magnetic axis or the mmf axis for two coils please have a look i have drawn the magnetic axis for coil 1 1 dash and i have drawn the magnetic axis for coil 6 6 dash 6 6 dash okay let me use a different color so that it's not uh, getting confused you are not getting confused let's say this is the magnetic axis for coil 6 6 dash okay and this is for 1 1 dash so what do you find that if i can if i am able to resolve it if i am able to resolve this components you will find that one component is going to get cancelled that is this component this component will get cancelled out and only which component is going to stay only this vertical component is going to stay so the same thing can be done for remaining four coils so i have drawn for uh, two coils that is one one dash and six six dash but remaining four coils will have the same thing same fit so if you do like that you will find that the armature magnetic axis is coming downwards for this particular case. I am not making an attempt to generalize thing. Please remember, I am not saying that armature MMF axis will be always downwards. In this particular case, it happens to be acting downwards based on the induced MF polarity of the armature winding. Based on the induced MF uh, polarity or you can say the based on the direction of armature current, I am making this comment that armature MMF axis will be acting downwards. Okay. Now what about the field flux? Field flux you apply right hand rule, it is in this direction. So the thing is that if you take the resultant of the space phasor, space phasor means phasor which is which is indicating the flux orientation in space. So what are the flux we are considering here? We are considering two flux, field flux and armature flux. So what is the orientation of the field flux? Apply right hand rule, field flux is in this orientation, horizontal. What is the orientation of the armature flux? Vertical. So what will be the resultant? Apply this simple rule. This is my field flux and this is my armature flux. So armature flux is like this, field flux is like this. So what is the resultant flux? Resultant flux is the, you have to draw a parallelogram draw a parallelogram taking phi f and phi a as the adjacent side we have to draw a parallelogram taking phi a and phi f as the adjacent side so this will be my resultant flux so this is your phi r so what i want to say under loaded condition the orientation of the resultant flux will be somewhat like this so that means lines of flux will be like this if you recall if you recall the diagram which i have drawn in my armature reaction video you will find that at one quality because getting added at another quality because getting subtracted so maybe you will have some sort of like this like this so the b vector was actually like this okay so if b vector is like this now you again think over what you have to think over what you have to think over the fate or what is going to happen with the countered coil the commutated coil is going to occupy a position indicated by the CC dash. Now what is the direction of B now? Direction of B is like this. Direction of B is like this. What about V? V is like this. 
so this angle is neither zero nor it is one eighty degree. So what happens? There will be induced EMF where in the coil side C because you see due to the effect of armature flux, due to the effect of armature flux, field flux is no more horizontal. It has been taking a position like this in this particular case. So what is happening? B vector has become now like this. This is the direction of the B vector. You see this B vector is parallel with these lines of flux. This B vector is parallel with these lines of flux. So this is B vector, this is V vector, velocity vector. So angle is not 0 or 180. So you can expect a induced CMF in this commutated coil C, C dash. Here also same thing is going to happen. B vector is where? B vector is here and V vector is here. So this is not 180 degree. So you will have some induced CMF in the coil side CC dash. Okay? Are you able to understand? If possible, please zoom the position to this one so that it's clear. I have made it a little bit clumsy by drawing this lines of flux. But I had to, I had no option because I wanted to uh, make sure that you realize that when field flux and armature flux both are acting simultaneously, that means under loaded condition, the flux distribution will be changing and B vector will become like this. Okay. So now what you see that in the commutated coil there is an induced CMF because now velocity vector and B vector are no more in the same line. They are not parallel. Here they are not anti-parallel. So there is some angle existing. So you will have induced CMF in coil side C and C dash. So what happens? This is not desirable. What? Why this is not desirable? Because we want quick reversal of the commutated coil armature current. Well, what, we want, what we want to say is that the coil which is undergoing commutation for that a commutated coil there should be a quick reversal of uh, coil current. So for that to happen this is not the way because you will have a large circulating current also flowing because of this induced CMF. Now there is another thing which is going to uh, uh, what should I say? There is another thing which will provide a hindrance or it will uh, uh, delay the reversal of current. It will delay the reversal of current through the commutated coil and that is known as reactance voltage. Reactance voltage, what is it reactance voltage? Please be, be aware that the coil which is undergoing commutation, that coil is having some flux linkage because lines of flux is passing through this coil. If you uh, let's say let's say this is my coil this is my coil so this is the position of the coil so how much area is being enclosed by the coil this area is enclosed by the coil if this is the commutated coil position if this is the commutated coil position so this is the area enclosed by the coil so this area is having some flux passing through it so it will have an inductance let's say lc so what is lc lc is the inductance of the commutated coil so if LC is the inductance of the commutated coil, if LC is the inductance of the commutated coil, how much EMF should be induced in the commutated coil due to the reversal of current? LDIDT. Remember that formula LDIDT. So what is the change in current here? Change in current. Before commutation, the coil was carrying current IA by A, say positive. After commutation is completed, the coil is again carrying same current IA by A, but only difference is that it is negative. That means the coil current has been reversed. So what is the change in current? From IA by A to minus IA by A. That means 2 IA by A. So what is the I or what is the change in current? 2 IA by A. And how much time is needed for this reversal of current? Commutation time TC. So what is delta I? Delta I is 2 into IA by A. And what is change in uh, and in how much time this change in current has taken place in how much time commutation time tc so this is similar to ldidt di is your 2 ia by a and what is dt tc commutation time so this thing is known as reactance voltage this thing is known as reactance voltage this thing is known as reactance voltage now mind you this thing is known as reactance voltage now what happens is that due to this reactance voltage or reactance EMF induced in the commutated coil, there is a delay. 
there is a delay in the reversal of current. Why there is a delay? You invoke Lange's law. What Lange's law says? Lange's law says that Lange's law says that effect will oppose effect will oppose the cause creating it. So why the EMF is induced? Why the reactance voltage or reactance EMF is induced? Reactance EMF is induced because there is a reversal of current. So what is the cause? Reversal of current. So according to Lange's law, the reactance voltage should oppose the cause. Effect will oppose the cause. What is the cause of reactance voltage? Why there is a reactance voltage induced? Due to the change in current. Due to the change in current. So change in current is the cause. And induced voltage is the effect. So voltage will oppose the cause. That means voltage will not allow the current to change. Or rather you can say reactance voltage will slow down. Reactance voltage will slow down or it will delay the change in current. Change in current. That is the rate of change of current of the armature coil will reduce. It will become slower. So there is a delay. So that means what? The time taken for the reversal of current now needed has to be longer compared to the earlier case because due to reactance EMF or reactance voltage what is happening according to Lange's law what the Lange's law say effect will oppose the cause producing it so voltage is induced due to, due to the change in current so voltage will oppose the change in current so if it is opposing the change in current there will be a delay in the change in current so that delay is being uh, indicated by what that it will take longer time it will take the it will take longer time for the change in current so that thing is that thing is indicated by this that thing is indicated by this one so how much extra time is needed this much but be sure that this extra time is not provided only this much time is provided. Why? Because commutation time Tc depends on two factors. What are they? How much wide the brush is? How much wide the brush is? Once a machine is manufactured, the brush width is not going to change. So that is constant. And the peripheral speed of the armature depends on what? The prime mover speed. Peripheral speed of the armature depends on prime mover speed because we have taken which action? We have taken generating action, so there will be a prime mover. So prime mover speed will decide what is the peripheral speed. So you see this commutation time Tc is not changed, it is same. But now what happens due to reactance voltage and due to this induced EMF due to the armature reaction, what is happening that it will take a longer time for the reversal of current. But that longer time is not provided because we are saying that commutation time is not changed since commutation time depends on brush width which is not changed because machine is already manufactured another thing is that the speed of the armature here depends on the prime mover speed which is going to here the speed of the armature depends on what prime mover speed which is unaffected which is not changed so we say that commutation time is same but now the change of the current is become slower so what happens this much current it appears as spark it appears as spark at the trailing edge of the brush this much current okay so this sparking at the commutator and brush contact this sparking at the commutator and brush contact is very detrimental because it creates pits on the commutator surface pits means that small uh, holes like that on the commutator surface that attracts dirt and moisture which further creates a thin insulating film and that thin insulating film over that portion uh, breaks the contact electrical contact between the brush and commutator segment so what happens at that portion where a thin film is being created insulating film due to that dirt which is being accumulated due to the moisture formed on the pits what happens the current density increases and there is a further deterioration further there is a deterioration in the commutation so in order to avoid or solve this problem what can be done we can use interpole or com pole or commutating pole so at the onset i should make it clear that 
Interpol is only effective in the commutation zone. Please remember this. Interpoles are only effective in the commutating zone or commutation zone. So, so please look here. This dotted line, this dotted line is represented is representing the commutating zone. So this is the this dotted line is representing the commutating zone. So what is the basic idea? Basic idea is that we will create a MMF due to the interpol and the interpol MMF is going to cancel the armature MMF. Now please be very careful in this. What I want to say is that interpol MMF, interpol MMF will cancel the armature MMF. Okay, but this cancellation of armature MMF by the interpol MMF is only happening is only happening in the commutation zone not elsewhere that is the point which should be thoroughly kept in mind that the interpol MMF is going to cancel the armature MMF but this cancellation of armature MMF by interpol MMF is happening or taking place only in the commutating zone what is commutating zone this dotted line green dotted line which is shown here this green dotted line is actually the commutating zone obviously the name you can figure out why this portion is known as commutating zone because whichever coil maybe 1 1 dash 2 2 dash 3 3 dash whichever coil comes in this position it undergoes commutation that's why this zone is known as commutating zone now what is the basic idea the basic idea is to cancel the armature MMF in the commutating zone only not elsewhere not otherwise but actually it's not like that what we will find is that interpol MMF is around 1.2 to 1.3 times that of the armature MMF so our if our basic idea is to only cancel the armature MMF in that case interpol MMF would have been equal to armature MMF so what happens the net MMF net MMF in the uh, net MMF in the commutating zone becomes zero so there is no flux in the commutating zone but actually we will find that interpol MMF is around 1.2 to 1.3 times that of the armature MMF so why it is like that what we want is that interpol MMF should do two things first interpol MMF should cancel the armature MMF in the commutating zone and second is that it should develop some flux. So if the interpol MMF is developing some flux, due to that flux, a rotational voltage or rotational EMF will be induced in the commutating coil CC dash. And that rotational EMF induced in the commutating coil due to this interpol flux is going to cancel out the reactance voltage. Is going to cancel out the reactance voltage. Let me repeat once more. What I want to say is that interpol MMF has to do two things. First interpol MMF will cancel out the armature MMF in the commutating zone. Interpol MMF will cancel out the interpol MMF will cancel out the armature MMF in the commutating zone. Second is that it should set up some flux. Which, which one? Interpol, interpol should set up some flux in the commutating zone. And due to this flux in the commutating zone which is produced by the interpol winding a rotational emf will be induced in the commutated coil cc dash and this emf induced in the commutated coil cc dash what kind of emf rotational emf due to which flux flux created by the interpol winding this rotational emf induced in the commutated coil is going to cancel out or going to neutralize the reactance voltage induced in the commutated coil. So reactor voltage has its origin due to this thing LDIDT. LC is the inductance of the commutating coil and this 2 IA by A by TC is the DIDT. So this voltage, reactor voltage is being cancelled out or neutralized by the EMF induced in the commutated coil due to interpol flux. So <coughs> what we want that a rotational EMF, rotational EMF will be induced in which coil? The coil which is undergoing commutation that is CC dash and that induced EMF, that rotational EMF, rotational EMF induced in the commutating coil will, will neutralize or cancel the 
reactance voltage. So this is one thing, and another thing is that interpolar MMF should cancel the armature MMF. Now, what is the formula for MMF? Number of turns into now what I want to say is that we need to think that formula for MMF is what number of turns into current. So what is the formula for armature MMF? Effective, effective number of armature turns by armature current. Now armature current depends on the loading. If you increase the loading on the DC machine, armature current will increase. If you, if you decrease the loading on the DC machine, armature current will decrease. And if you increase the loading, increase the loading on the DC machine, armature current will increase. So, armature MMF is also a variable thing. It's not constant, na? Because armature MMF depends on armature current. And armature current depends on loading. Loading can always change. Loading can always vary. So, if loading is changing or varying, then armature MMF is also varying. So, how to make sure, how to make sure that interpol winding MMF or the MMF due to interpol windings is uh, always getting adjusted to a value which is slightly higher than the armature MMF. This is our question. What we are saying that due to change in the loading, the armature current is going to change. And when armature current changes, then armature MMF changes. But what we wanted that interpol winding should cancel the armature MMF in the commutating zone and at the same time, it should develop a flux so that a rotational voltage is induced in the commutated coil due to that flux. So for that, we should make sure that the armature MMF and the interpol winding MMF are re related in such a way that interpol winding MMF is around 1.2 to 1.3 times the armature MMF. But for the reason that armature MMF is itself a variable quantity because armature MMF depends on armature current, armature current depends on the loading. How to make sure that interpol winding MMF is around 1.2 to 1.3 times armature MMF? The only way to make sure is you have to connect them in series. So what I am saying, the interpol windings, the interpol windings and the armature winding, they have to be, they have to be connected in series. So if you connect, if you connect interpol winding and armature winding in series, then this problem that we change in loading armature current will change and armature MMF will change is obviously solved because whatever current flows through the windings of the interpole, the same current is the armature current. Whatever current flows through the windings of the interpole, the same current flows through the armature winding. So that changing armature MMF due to change in load is accordingly adjusted by the interpole windings because interpole windings and armature winding are connected in series that means they are carrying the same current okay now we have connected in series the interpole windings and armature winding we are connected in series but what should be the polarity so you just use a common sense and tell me please look here this coil side one over here this coil side 1 is going to move to position occupied by coil side 6 dash. This coil side 1 will occupy a position occupied. This coil side 1 is going to occupy a position which was previously occupied by 6 dash. Because it is rotating in clockwise direction. So coil side 1 will move to this side. So coil side 1 will occupy position 6 dash. So what should be the polarity of coil side 1 when it moves to position 6 dash, it should be dot. So, what I want to say is that the interpole, the interpole polarity, whether this will be north pole or south pole, will be, will be such that it should help aid in the induced EMF which this coil is going to attain when it is going to move under south pole. Over here now coil side 1 is under the influence of north pole and it is having cross polarity. When it moves under the influence of south pole, it should have dot polarity. So this interpole winding should induce an EMF in this commutated coil which is dot. Because coil side 1 will come to position C, then it will come to position 6 dash. So when coil side 1 is coming to position 6 dash, 
it is having which kind of polarity what polarity is going to attain coil side 1 is going to attain a polarity dot when it moves from north pole to south pole so this interpole should induce an emf in the coil side c which will be dot that means what if you have this polarity induced in a polarity in coil side c has to be dot then what should be the polarity of interpole here whether it will be north or south you use right hand rule what do you want you want the induction of polarity in coil side c to be dot that means this middle finger should be pointing out now what is the peripheral velocity of c this one so you see here please observe peripheral velocity of coil side c is where this side so thumb is here what do you want that emf induced in this coil side c should be dot why you want that emf induced in coil side c should be dot because it is it is going to get that dot polarity ultimately coil side c is going to move to this side so when it is moving this side it should have what polarity dot so you are helping in attaining this dot polarity so that means c should have dot polarity dot means out of the board so middle finger should be out of the board so middle finger is out of the board and this thumb is along the velocity vector so where is the index finger pointing into that means lines of flux should enter this pole so that means it should be south pole so this will be my south pole obviously then this will be north pole or you can apply the same logic if you wish that this coil side c dash is going to occupy which position this position so it is going to become cross so this interpole should induce an emf here which is same as that has to be attained by this after moving under this north pole so when this coil side c dash moves from this position to this position moves from this position to this position it is going to attain a cross polarity so this interpole should induce here cross so for cross to be induced middle finger should be pointing into the board where is the tangential velocity here so you see thumb this index finger index finger is pointing out so you see lines of flux should leave here so this should be not pole now you can take the you can put the cross and rod cross means uh, cross means entering dot means leaving so thumb is into it and it is south pole so this will be cross and this will be dot what about this same thing cross and these are your dot cross dot cross dot so you see now what happens you can say that armature current is entering through here say ia then it is leaving here this is ia Armature current, this is armature current I A. This is also armature current I A. This is armature current I A. So you see here, so this armature current is leaving the brush, which is also leaving the brush. Okay. okay. So armature current is entering the brush and leaving the brush. So you see interpole windings and armature are connected in series. Now how to find the polarity? The logic was very clear and simple. What was it? That coil side 1 is going to attain a dot polarity when it moves to this side so this interpole should induce an emf in the coil side c which should be dot because it is going to get dot polarity and same thing for c dash c dash is going to move to this side so it is going to get cross polarity so this should induce a cross emf in coil side c dash so that's why it is north and south so how to sum up this you can see what action we have taken we have taken generating action so for generating action what is the polarity of the interpole as that of the main pole ahead of it in the direction of rotation you see you move in the direction of rotation move in the direction of rotation and see what is the polarity of main pole ahead of this interpole south pole so this should be south pole <coughs> again you move in the direction of rotation again you move in the direction of rotation and see what is the main pole which is ahead of this interpole what is the main pole which is ahead of this interpole this one what is this not so this will be not so for generating action what is the polarity of interpole as that of the main pole ahead of it in the direction of rotation so for motoring action what is the polarity of interpole for motoring action for motoring action direction of rotation will be opposite to this opposite to this so in that case it will be 
interpole polarity will be same as that of the main pole behind it because in case of motoring action if you do not change this main field north and south if you do not change this main north and south field in that case for motoring action direction of rotation will be in this direction so in that case the interpole the interpole polarity is same as that of the main pole behind it as that of the main pole behind it so this is for motoring and generating now what's the another thing which may come to your mind what should be the number of interpoles so the number of interpoles should be equals to the number of main pole that means if the number of main pole is 2 the number of interpoles should be also 2 if the number of main poles is 4 then number of interpoles should be also 4 so number of interpoles equals to number of main poles so number of main poles 2 here that's why number of interpoles is also 2 so if the if the number of main pole is 4 the number of interpole is also 4 but please remember please remember that for small machine whose rating is below say 4 kilowatt or 3 kilowatt for small machine for small dc machine whose rating is below 3 to 4 kilowatt whose rating is below 3 to 4 kilowatt for small dc machine the number of interpoles is half that of the main pole the number of interpoles is half that of the main poles okay okay uh, let it be up to here only thank you